just want to say the names, your names, just for the record, we're videotaping. <laughs> No, not yet. Okay. Now we're just gonna say the, your your names because this is gonna be in the archives for the church. Your names and then how long you've been a member of the church and then. Well, um, my name is Georgia Johnson Heron, and that, of course when I uh, joined Third Baptist, I was Georgia Johnson, <clears throat> and uh, I was baptized by Reverend Bullock in 1936. And uh, I was, I, my first time to this church, I was a month old. It was Christmas 1924 when I first came into this church. And uh, of course, I enjoyed the long, long stay here at the church. And there's so many people that I remember. Uh, there's one thing I want to say when I came here. Oh, my mother uh, was one of the uh, people that came from Franklin Street. Our church used to be on Franklin Street. And she was one of those that walked over and when they uh, broke ground for this um, this uh, location here, this in Q Street and Rockwell. So that's that. All, uh, all of my family went here, and I think I was, of course, the longest liver. And all of the children were baptized. All my sisters and brothers, seven siblings, were baptized here, also at their Baptist church. And you are? Oh, I'm uh... Deacon Major Anderson. I've been a member of uh, the Third Baptist Church for approximately 42 years. I was brought to this church from my late wife, Deaconess Lurleen Anderson. Yeah. And that's why I am so respectful of the ladies. Most men don't like what I'm about to say now. <laughs> when I say that, I learned myself that women are smarter than men. <laughs> <laughs> and if we listen to them, you know, great things can be accomplished. Mm -hmm. I feel in love with this church because of the people. I learned to appreciate the fellowship and the love that I have found in this church yeah. and has continued throughout all these many years, the love, the care for one another. This is what attracted me to this church, is the people, because we know the people is the church. I am now um, 91 years of age. And I consider that a great blessing for our Lord and Savior to allow me to live this many years and to remain in a reasonable portion of health and sound mind. That is a lot to be thankful for, and I consider it a great blessing. Okay. And I intend to keep on serving the Lord. As, as long as God gives me strength, and ability to do so, do so. And I believe this is the reason why God has allowed me to live as long as he has, because he is using me, as he can do all of us, as his hands and his voice, to tell others about him, to draw all people unto him. And he needs us, mm -hmm. as his hand and feet, to do so. Okay, so another question would be, um, what are some of your memories from those years that you guys have attended Third Baptist? Like, what are your fondest memories? Well, I guess when I, the fondest memories I have, uh, particularly Easter Sunday. If you didn't get it earlier, we wouldn't get a seat. It's impossible. I remember one year I got the last seat in the balcony, and uh, Reverend Brooke was preaching. And uh, he was a wonderful, dynamic preacher. And I remember that he uh, required his teacher, God later became a Sunday school teacher, he required us to meet him on Saturday evening, and he would go over Sunday school lessons with us. And uh, we don't do that now. We don't have preachers that teach teachers. And that's what he did. He taught the teachers, uh, and it impressed me so much. And another um, strong gathering, 
uh, is there was a prayer meeting on Tuesday night. That other downstairs was just packed with people coming, and I remember sitting there and you get up and give your testimony. And so we don't do much of that anymore. And uh, but those are two things I remember: the, the full house on prayer um, prayer meeting night, and the Sunday school meeting on Saturdays and um, Easter Sunday morning was just packed. Well, my fondest memory would be the uh, prayer and testimony of the uh, of the deaconesses. Mm -hmm. um, they would get up and make such strong testimonies. And I remember, if I can recall the names of the parody, Madison. Oh, yes. Yeah. And they would remember one saying that, let the Redeemer say so. Yeah. <laughs> let the Redeemer say so. And this same weakness, I can't recall who used this word, this, this, let the Redeemer say so. She was instrumental in me uh, becoming a member of the senior choir. Uh, back in those days, we had several choirs. Yeah. I mean, the choir law were filled with uh, members of the choir. And so she insisted that I become a member of the senior choir. And that's one of my proudest members of the third of the church. Okay. What are some of the activities um, that you guys have in place for when you first join the church that you can remember? Some of the things like maybe Feed the Hungry or yes, uh, those sorts of activities. What, some, what are some of those things that you can remember from the early years? Church, uh, through the uh, missionary, uh, society um, was known throughout the city for, for feeding the hungry. And uh, we were the number one church in, in that field. And um, we would also um, not only feed the hungry, we would, uh, gave out um, clothing and um, we had a food bank. We didn't call it that. We just had some people come by and get things like that. And Reverend Bull would do that. Uh, he had a, we had a big green brush uh, given by Ms. Uh, Deacon Hawkins' husband, uh, father, Reverend Barringer, would drive the bus, and we would even take food to some of the homeless people. And uh, they, they also went down and picked up uh, people to come to church on Sunday. I remember the big, the, uh, the visitation of the sick and shut in uh, by the uh, Deacon's board. Uh, we would meet once a month, and deacon, when I became a deacon, uh, the, the, the deacon uh, Leon Bush uh, was the uh, president, was the chairman of the deacon board. He would make out a list, and uh, that each deacon, group of deacons were assigned to visit our sick and shut in. And we would visit the homes, we would visit the hospitals, uh, and uh, the uh, nursing homes of our sick and shared ass. And there were several uh, members of our sick and shared ass that we were assigned to visit every month. So that's my fondest member that we had back in those days. Okay, uh, next question. What did you do to bring in new members? I guess um, the best way, of course, I was word of mouth. Family, we lived in families, and uh, each one bring one. And um, I know in my family, we tried very hard. They didn't stay forever, like I did, but they, that's how we brought them in, by like just word of mouth and bringing, and the activities. I remember up now with the Tacoma Park where I live now, Third Baptist had um, a huge picnic, huge. And, and people in the neighborhood came in, and some of them even joined the church that time. And that was, they looked for that every year, the big picnic we, we had every year. And uh, we got a lot of people from that. And then we belonged to the uh, Lot Carey with um, Deacon uh, my, uh, my Night. And uh, the Lot Carey was a famous, famous organization. It was segregated at one time. And, and then, uh, so in 1924, the year I was born, it was re reorganized, and uh, the plaque uh, commemorating that is hanging right downstairs now in our in our church uh, auditorium. Uh, and that's how we got a lot of people. We went to the convention, and Reverend Somerville would tell them about Reverend Bullock, and the people would just come to visit. They thought they would just come to visit, and they would come and join. 
because I'm dynamic preaching. It's dynamic preaching the Reverend Bullock. Yeah, as I was say, word of mouth was, um, I recall, our main way of bringing new members. And also, uh, your walk of life. Uh, others observing you, see how you act and conduct yourself, not just in church, but also outside of the church. And just spread the word. When people see you happy and doing right, it make them want to sort of do what you do. And all of this is bringing people to uh, Leading people to God. What do you think of the state of our church today? Uh, unfortunately, um, the word uh, is not out. I don't know, that it's, but it's, being, it's just not our church. And uh, I think our church is headed in the right direction. We have, I think, we have a good pastor that listens to the people. And uh, most of the people that are joining are trying to start work, and he's uh, beginning to um, engage the young people. And that's, that's the secret. Without young people, the church will die. And um, uh, there's nothing like hope. We hope. And um, uh, as I uh, thought about this interview, I said, uh, as Jesus said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. And so one of the reasons why I kept working is because I remember what the people came before me especially my first uh, Sunday school teacher was Dick Hedgerow, was my first teacher. And she was such a wonderful person that um, I remember her and I tried to follow her ways and her teaching. And I think that's what we're trying to do today. I wanted to compliment uh, people like uh, Gary Smith Jr. who's training people, training uh, Deacon uh, Sanders, how to take charge, how to conduct a meeting. And uh, that's so important and he's done, uh, Stephen Smith has done so much himself, and he doesn't take any of the glory, but he uh, is sharing it now. And, and we know that we're not going to be here forever, so why not train other people? And I, I think our, our church is in a good state right now. I think it's in a very good state. I believe that in these days and times, we are in the end time, as the Bible speaks of, when it says Satan will be running rapid, seeking whom he can devour. So, I feel that we are in the end times and that Satan is having his way. Uh, not only the membership of Third Baptist Church is a little slack nowadays, most churches uh, are having <coughs> low memberships. Uh, I, enjoy, uh, I appreciate um, our pastor and I think that God has blessed us to have his leadership. And I think that he is doing a very wonderful job bringing us the message every day. And I have seen an uh, increase in members joining the church since he has been here. So I thank God for that. And I think we are heading in the right direction that God would have us to go. Okay. How would you advertise Third Baptist Church? Like, what's some, What are some of the programs you would like to see the church provide that we're not providing now? I was like, I think about Jeremy now. I think about opening our computer lab again. Now they would come in here if you had uh, with a minimum fee. And um, when you get some donation for the computer lab, that would bring children and adults to our church. They, they want that, they love that. And many children are, are exposed to uh, computers, but they don't have a chance to do it at home because there's so many ones. But if they come here and they know they have a computer, it's a sign to them and that they can use it. You would, uh, it would bring the people in. And another thing, of course, would always be the, um, like we had yesterday, the prayer feast, and we just call it the community day. We need that to, to let people talk to them. And sometimes you just fall in love with people just by talking to them and find out what they can do. And um, another thing is um, starting the, the youth the choir. Let the children sing and, uh, and, and teach the children. I see, like I told Curtis, um, um, I got his last name, Curtis Barnes, that just joined. Tell your friends that you joined Third Baptist and then tell somebody about what you're doing and how you help the pastor. And they feel so proud walking down the aisle like an arm bearer for the pastor. Yeah, the only thing I concur exactly with uh, Deacon Heron I just stated. The only thing I could add to that was uh, as far as any kind of programs would be the Boy Scouts. 
Mm -hmm. that we used to program that we used to have yeah, here. And I think program like that will attract more young people. And by attracting more young people, automatically means we attract their parents, uh, likewise, to, uh, to join the church and work in the church. Now that's a secret. You bring the children, the parents are going to come. Yes. But you let them, let them do something. We had talent night. Uh, and um, Eric, Eric, all the parents thought their child was the best, but that's fine. We're sorry. <laughs> a lot of them came in here and, mm -hmm. and came to church. But that, that's the secret of uh, being an Irishman is to get the children involved mm -hmm. and give them a night to yes. what we call show off. And uh, then the parents will come. Yes. Okay. Anything else you would like to? share with us about your overall experience with Third Baptist? Yeah, this lady right here, I had her picture, Miss Cooper. Yes. We, we, it's, hard, it's hard to find another Miss Cooper. It's hard to find another. <laughs> and she would go around and say, don't be hiding from me up in there. I see up in that window. <laughs> get your shoes paused and get ready to go to church tomorrow morning. And uh, when I had my 50th wedding anniversary, my son wrote a uh, song for her called Miss Cooper's Roundup. And uh, we need somebody like that loves the children, loves the neighborhood, and um, not afraid to uh, take charge and make them, make them obey. And, mm -hmm. come in. and they would come to church and uh, work with her. Uh, like you said, the Boy Scouts was another wonderful thing. And, and um, Curtis Smith Sr. helped uh, Billy Smith with, the, with that. We also need something to be, to be done with uh, employment. People want jobs. And uh, Emma Smith, this picture is right here. Um, she was in charge of that when I was uh, young at the church. And she would, um, if her, at her job as a social worker, she would tell the congregation what jobs were available. And, where, and when sometimes you get the inside dope on what's going on downtown at the convention center, you may get a, get a job. So we need somebody to um, take leadership in that field. Yeah, as we said about uh, how strong Deaconess is <laughs> and how Sister De uh, Cooper, how she has worked and built this church up, brought in so many young people from kids to adulthood. Uh, they, so she, she continues to tutor them and lead them uh, towards God. And just need more people like that. And mm -hmm. That's why another reason why I know Satan is having this way because we don't have those strong spiritual leaders today that we had back in the past. Years. So I also learned to uh, just pray on my like this and some things that we can do, some problems that we can have, that we can solve, and there are some problems that we as individuals cannot solve. The only thing we can do. I uh, feel that I can do is to continue praying, uh, take these matters to God, and just leave it there, and uh, leave it in His hand, knowing that we left it in the best place.